most of us were introduced to Merlin, the kindly old, uh, vaguely eccentric wizard from the uh, movie The Sword and Stone, which is based on a book by the author T.H. White called The Once and Future King, which has a wonderful extra conclusion called The Book of Merlin, which wasn't published until well after his death. But there's much more to Merlin, more than is just in the most commonly read works. There's Merlin, the wise old sage who we're all familiar with, but he, he starts out as a prophetic young child, speaking to a king, as the person who is in charge of the upbringing of King Arthur, the man who is responsible for finding and orchestrating that whole incident with the sword and the stone, as Arthur's wisest and most valuable advisor as he grows, and as the man responsible for getting Arthur a new sword when he goes and wrecks the one that he got. And of course then Merlin vanishes rather mysteriously. Today you'll be looking at works about Merlin. You're going to start out with uh, T.H. White's Sword in the Stone. That'll be interspersed with uh, some quotations some video quotations from Walt Disney's wonderful film, The Sword in the Stone, which was how most of us were introduced to Arthur in the first place. After that, you will be looking at brief passages from Jeffrey Ash, who's done some wonderful introductions about the life of Merlin. Uh, following that, you're going to look at Sir Thomas Mallory's bits about Merlin. Um, that's, the, that's the historical portion again. I hope that you find the readings today more engaging, but I'm going to try and keep a balance between the historical texts from which the majority of the sources are drawn and the modern texts that are fun, engaging reinterpretations of older legends. Uh, the word legend, I'll get back to that in a minute. Briefly, we can say that a myth gives a religious explanation for something, how the world or a particular custom began. There's usually no attempt to fix the myth into a coherent chronology related to the present day, though myths or a cycle of myths may have their own internal chronology. The story's timeless, in that the events are symbolic rather than just the way it happened. In calling a story a myth, we are expressing no opinion about whether it is true or not. In the days when, at least publicly, Christianity was assumed to be true and other religions false by those writing about religion, the specialist's use of the word myth was closer to the popular use to mean an untrue religious story, and it was only used for other people's religions. A legend, on the other hand, is a story which is told as if it were a historical event, rather than as an explanation for something, or a symbolic narrative. The legend may or may not be an elaborated version of a historical event. Thus, examples of legends are the stories about Robin Hood, which are set in a, def in a definite period, the reign of Richard of England or about King Arthur, which were perhaps originally based on the exploits of a prince who attempted to resist the expansion of the Anglo-Saxons in, in what was to become England. The stories about Robin Hood and King Arthur have been elaborated and expanded on down the years. While myths and legends may be transmitted orally or in writing, folk tales tend to be transmitted orally, and although they are transmitted from generation to generation and so their origin or author is unknown, they are more definitely felt to be stories, for example, fiction. Um, many European folk tales were written down in the 19th century, and some at least were transformed into fairy tales, which tend to be more consciously literary productions with a definite author, such as Hans Christian Andersen. Typically, folk and fairy tales involve magic and magical creatures and people such as witches, dragons, and dwarves, rather than religion, like Cinderella and Jack and the Beanstalk. Sean asked me before if um, the Giant's Dance was the same as Stonehenge, which is the monument that you can see in front of you right now. But honestly, we don't really know. Um, Stonehenge is, is just the most famous of a series of um, standing stone monuments that you'll find all over the British Isles and in Ireland. Um, no one knows exactly why they exist. Um, there's been speculation from temples to 
giant pieces of astronomical equipment. Um, the reality is, is that the giant stance was something like Stonehenge. And I have a question. What about Uther Pendragon, the legendary father of King Arthur? We know for a fact that he existed. I mean, his flag, the Pendragon Bennant, a pe pennant is the uh, banner for Wales to this day. So you want to know if King Arthur was real or not? Uh, I don't know. I really want the answer to be yes. And I've spent a really, really long time reading and, and traveling and trying to figure things out. And there's a lot of evidence that he was a real person. There's a lot of evidence that he didn't ever exist, but you science folks know how hard it is to prove that something never existed or can't exist. It's, it's difficult, and I think that, that um, Sheebs makes an excellent point when he says it's like Beowulf. I think it's more important that we look at the legends and try and find out what they can teach us about ourselves, about each other, about society. Um, I, I think it is important to figure out whether or not King Arthur ever lived, and I think that we get a little bit closer all the time, but ultimately I don't know that we're ever going to know. And Merlin... <laughs> Well, there's both more and less evidence for Merlin, but who knows? If he was a wizard, he could have just vanished. This has been a Weeble H production.